he's taking lead. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'm here still. So I'll take no. the in charge. <laughs> you're, uh, not, you're not allowed to talk. Welcome to today's <laughs> yeah. DevSync. Uh, it's Thursday, the 14th of October. Uh, still 2021. How good is that? Um, Michael is not talking too much today, so um, let's start with Derek. All right, so yeah, um, did a little bit of stuff on the alarm skill this morning because Chris noticed uh, some screw ups. I kind of didn't um, really take into account 24 hour time for, for the alarm, so I had to scale some things up. Um, and that was about all I could do on the GUI kind of uh, skill side of things today. I had a bunch of uh, requests on the from the marketing side. We're pull, pushing out some new ads starting next week. Um, so about five ideas there that I started working on. And, um, we had we just had a actually just had a conversation. I just you know kind of started working on. Um, <clears throat> and then Joshua has been in town, so we met briefly today. And then I've been trying to get um, the 3D prints uh, put together. To bring with on uh, for next week, so I can convert some of our our dev kits that are in Hawaii to 3D printed versions. So that's been it's been kind of all over the place today. <laughs> and then we had a, a real quick uh, uh, manufacturing discussion as well. <laughs> so cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> Ken Smith. Okay, there's no feedback, right? You're okay with that level? Okay, good. Uh, so I have the alarm bugs fixes PR ready to go. I don't know what branch I'm supposed to be uh, branching off of. Is this the alarm skill that's out? Is this like 2104 or whatever, or is it off somewhere else? What's, what's the branch I should be generating pull requests off of for the alarm skill? I've been branching, I've been committing PRs to 2102, and then once those PRs are merged, then I've been branching them back to the skill control branch, because the skill control branch is the branch that's on the mark too. So should I go ahead and create the PR against the skill control branch? Um, you, which which are mean, either, either one, skill control or 2102, and we'll, we'll get it across the other Okay, one. I'll go ahead and put it against skill control. So that was that was the first question I had because that PR is ready to go. I fixed all those bugs. Um, Derek, I reached out to you earlier. I, reass I reassigned them to you for verification, but you can't verify them until they actually get deployed. So I'll I'll ping you when that time is. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a look. Yeah. And then what else do I do today? So uh, I ran the alarm VK tests. Um, yeah, there's a lot failing, but something went on because I yanked all the snooze tests out of there and put them in a separate VK test file, so we didn't run them. You could just like rename them feature not or something, right? Because uh, we don't have snooze. That's a feature request. So uh, something happened there with those VK tests, but um, there's a bunch of them are failing. It seems like most of them are snooze, and that's kind of what I was working on uh, right before the meeting. Um, I'm re I reviewed Chris's PR today and proved that. Uh, I'm working on isolating this mysterious volume change issue. Uh, but what I can tell you is that I was not able to reproduce that behavior with this build um, by using the alarm skill alone. And I noticed in your video that you would run the timer skill before that. So I'm going to try to do the exact same steps and see if the timer skill is potentially going off in the background and lowering the volume. Uh, because I do see that it's active quite frequently. It'll you know, periodically show up in the log and say it's looking for any active timers and stuff like that. And so it could be a, a byproduct of that. So that's what I'm chasing down. That's the last remaining bug. Um, there are two feature requests for the alarm skill. How do we indicate in JIRA a feature request versus a bug? Task versus bug. Make it a task. Task versus what? Bug. Mark, mark okay. the ticket so as a task instead of a bug. Task. Okay, good. Good. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so I'll be buttoning up probably all the alarm skill because uh, it did you know, have some issues. I fixed them. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, other than that, non-work related, I reached out and had a very good conversation today with a visually impaired person from the Broward School for the Visually Impaired. Actually hit seven because on the menu options, it was seven for technology. And so that put me through to who I thought was at this school, but it turns out they're the vendor that handles technology for the visually impaired, like setting up Braille machines and stuff like that. And he's completely blind. His name is Jose. And we had a great conversation. I told him what we would we would have. And he was really excited because he said, yeah, Derek, what you know, you showed us is the crap they have to put up with. And I said, well, that's pretty, you know, crappy, right? So you can say like next, next, next tab and, you know, tab through it. Why can't you just say like, you know, for a wiki uh, article, show me the table, read the cut table of contents, jump to this section. And he says, geez, if you could do that, it'd be freaking great. So we have an opportunity to make millions of people's lives better, possibly. Uh, I'll attack that on my own time, but that's something I'm interested in. Um, because it seems like it's a natural fit. And that's something I thought about since I joined the team was that, you know, we have a really golden opportunity to improve the quality of a certain sector of the, you know, our fellow citizens lives. Um, and we could do that. I can even, uh, probably throw together a couple of Mark twos out of table scraps that I got laying around and, you know, put them in over there and let them run with them. Uh, because I think that, inter I think that's a different product than the Mark two, just, you know, I think it's a very specifically devoted UI, a very specific product, solving a very specific problem, but our hardware can handle it and our framework can probably handle it. It's just a unique set of skills is the way I see it. Um, you know, obviously the screen doesn't do them any good, right? Uh, but, you know, I mean, so what? Uh, the Mark II would handle, you know, a lot of great stuff for them and improve the quality of their internet uh, experience, which he told me is pretty crappy to be perfectly honest. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, I, he's going to reach out and send me an email, and we're going to meet in person probably over the next month when I get back from Hawaii and stuff like that. So I thought that was exciting um, for non-work related stuff. So that's great. And uh, yeah, I'm still at night after these meetings, uh, getting back on my Jetson Nano uh, and trying to get the GPU working so we can do local TTS and STT without a net connection uh, at some point. And I'll put Minecraft on it um, as well. But what I'm really excited about is um, probably buying a second one <laughs> and plugging an SJ201 into it because it is pin for pin compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4. And so that's my status update. Yeah, cool. Um, Chris Fair. Uh, so I submitted a alarm scale PR for the UI, <clears throat> um, as both Ken and Derek alluded to. Um, can I address those issues? So if you want to take a second look at it, um, I did do, do a couple commits. Um, and I am looking through comments on the um, pairing skill um, PR I have out there. Um, so there's there's some sort of I don't know if it's a race condition or some message bus messages stomping on each other what it is but you know you can't I thought I had fixed it so you can get to the home screen as soon as you're done with um, pairing and it's not always working like that so um, and Gez pointed out some issue where the home screen showed up first which I haven't seen yet so I'm gonna try to recreate your steps Gez and see if I can get that too. Um, so I thought I was done with the pairing skill, but not quite. I'll probably I'll look at that this afternoon. I took a very long lunch today because I drove to Lawrence to hang out with uh, Eric and Josh. Um, so that was, that's been a good part of my day so far, but um, I'll get some work done on the skill pairing on the pairing skill this afternoon. Cool. Um, yeah, I've been continuing a little bit on the wiki skill, but didn't get too much time on it. Um, but I moved on to the GUI, uh, for it because that's a bit more exciting. <laughs> um, uh, there's some interesting work happening in the, um, there's a lot of 
yeah, good stuff happening in the, the home assistance skill um, from the community there. So um, the, the new additions have been adding support for covers, which are things like, you know, automated blinds and um, basically anything that can close over things uh, and uh, binary sensors. So, you know, um, as opposed to range sensors, I guess. Um, and yeah, the, the CI stuff, which is, um, which has been a huge, it's a huge PR and a, a huge amount of work from, um, from Tony. So, um, yeah, just doing a bit of a shout out there cause it's, uh, it's a, a whole bunch of work, um, that's been going on by primarily by Tony and, and a guy called Mat- Matthias. Um, so shout out to them. Um, Yes, been reviewing those things. Um, there's some stuff going on in the in the Mimic Recording Studio from uh, from uh, Thorsten, who's um, who's continuing his um, his enormous TTS journey. Um, and I also this week had a chat with uh, a master's student. Um, uh, there's this quite cool program in Australia uh, called the Masters of Applied Cybernetics. Um, and they're looking for a placement um, to finish their masters. Um, so he's a he's a, a web dev by day, um, and is obviously interested in this whole area of AI and um, and ethics and uh, you know language and culture and and all those sorts of things. So. Um, we had a good chat about where his skills and interests might fit in. And it seems like the, the whole precise, um, training loop and, you know, web interface, um, would be a perfect kind of area for that. So he's going to put together some stuff around, you know, in writing around, you know, what he, what he hopes to get out of the whole thing. But, um, yeah, I thought if we if we keep an eye on that, when that's gonna potentially come around and try and line it up with him, it could be a really good um, extra bit of resource for us, and um, and yeah, good for him as well. So seemed like a mutually beneficial thing. Um, I think that's about it. I actually have a. Um web-based GUI that you can build your models on your local computer, you know, using mm. a, uh, a browser. Right? Uh, so that's that's been on the back burner for uh, almost a year now. But when I was working on that stuff, it was a side project I did. So if we had a web dev that could take that and professionalize it, that would be a relatively valuable tool because then our community could train their own models and improve the wake words and customize them for themselves. So. Uh, you know, and some of them even have GPUs and they might be faster than our systems. So uh, that was something I was excited about at one time. Gez, are you still running the Tachyon uh, uh, TTS here, uh, Mark? Tour? The, yeah, the Coqui, yeah. Um, my, cro- my unit's probably and then dead the other? because I the- um, am running the... Uh, Is that me cutting out or Ken? Well, I'm hearing it, so I assume it's Ken. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I I think I heard your question, Ken. Um, so I am I am still running the Coqui TTS. Um, uh, it's good, but it's got a whole lot of um interesting quirks that you know I'm sure that. They'll be keen to, to iron out a bit. Many to reach out to them actually and find out how what's the best place to report those things. Um, so if you anyway, it's not about that. I dropped out, but that was it. Yeah, I was just curious because I've been running it and it sounds really good. Uh, yeah, there's there's some interesting ones like. I don't. Oh, that that actually wasn't too bad. Sometimes when it says um, 
Nelson Mandela, it says, it says Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's got some, um, there's some gotchas where if it hits certain uh, mixes, it gets off in the weeds. You know, it's probably branching into some strange place. And yeah. And it just babbles yeah. on. But because of the female voice, I, I'm used to that. So it didn't bother me. Oh, <laughs> oh dang. <laughs> oh, okay. I hope we're not recording not anymore. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <sighs> All right, now we have to censor Ken. <laughs> but that that's it yeah i was just curious because uh, it works really good i like it and i'd love to see it running locally um yes um uh, there's also larynx that can um the so raspy the, the crew at raspy um did or at least michael mike um built larynx which is the the, the whole purpose of that is that he wants it to be able to run faster than real time on a Raspberry Pi um, for TTS. So I haven't really played with it, but um, that could be one to look at. Does he use GPU? Oh, he can't. The Pi doesn't have a working GPU for this. The Pi's GPU is very... Um, Does the Pi not have a working would... GPU? It's, it's GPU is a disappointment. It's not what you think. It's a graphics GPU. Uh, in fact, the only code that supports it is like specifically for 3D graphic rendering, and for some reason they can't use them with TensorFlow models and stuff. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the support's not there. It may be there in the future, but it's not there. That's why I bought the Nano, uh, because you know you're dead in the water without a GPU trying to do mm. stuff local. I oh, that I'm also. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but um, Pandacore have been uh, testing out the f uh, 510 kernel. Um, on their systems, so I'm hoping we'll be able to have a test of that for the for the yeah. Mark II shortly, yeah, um, which will great. add GPU support. So at least for the graphics, if not for the yeah. TensorFlow, it'll, it'll render the QML faster. Uh, yeah. That's what I wanted to say actually is that the um, the the GUI the, the the UI is just top notch. It's, I really am impressed with the work. It's it's just looking really good, and uh, you know I saw it on the alarm scale the timers. It's just really coming together very well yeah yeah i feel like there's it's there's a whole lot of polish that um people are not gonna necessarily see because it's like just the way that it should work but they would see it if it wasn't there so um yeah i think i think we're doing the right stuff yeah coming along great i will give um kudos also to design framework we came up with um basically you know putting a screen together is now a very easy thing to do um you know as long as i put the grid lines on and count you know where the things go in the screen it's cake do you actually show like have a a thing that to to show up the grid lines on the screen and and shift things around yeah, Figma has, has a way to do it if you're in figma yeah. you can at least I, I have it running on my Mac. There's a you just go, you know, view grid lines, mm. um, and it, they show up. Yeah. Well, th thanks. I think that's one thing we really do. Like when it, I, I haven't really uh, written up a good post on it, um, but I think maybe we're getting close to where well, that might be needed, where we get it in the docs better, and I write up a good blog post on on how to use it. How we've kind of created some templates. It'd be cool to do a a video, particularly with you, Chris, around like looking at like how you how you take some of these designs and turn them into turn them into QML and do that as a, a little you know screencast for for our YouTube channel because um, I think that'll help a lot of people who are wanting to add um, GUIs to their skills um, but just don't really know where to get started beyond using some of the you know, base templates like show image and show text and that sort of thing. Um, hmm. Yeah, it took me um, like an hour to do the alarm just go. <laughs> yeah, you know? cool. So, so yeah, it's 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 pretty straightforward, which is nice. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I've, uh, I have a uh, to do is because I have to pair it to test it. And that's time-consuming. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe I should just kick the, the wiki skill over to you too then. <laughs> or you can learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, I'm just stealing your stuff. So, <laughs> you know. What's that? At the moment, I'm just stealing your stuff and then sticking uh -oh. it on there. <laughs> yeah. I was treated to a presentation of the uh, the new video player, um, music player, I guess, media player that Ovos is getting ready to release. Jarvis, uh, uh, you know, demonstrated that to me, and I and I thought it was really just top notch. I mean, I have some, you know, concerns about the underlying architecture, but you know, the UI is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we should also just shout out to Aditya and Blue Systems crew and mm. um, putting in some good uh, contributions. The volume slider is really nice. Uh, that pops up when you do a volume change, and you can interact with it. You can slide it back and forth. Yeah, you know, works really good. You like good. that? Yeah. My first inclination was, "Geez, you ain't got to show it." <laughs> well. That I mean, yeah, maybe we could have a setting where you don't, where you can, you can show it or not show it. Um, but you know, we, we're also talking about, and this is where skills interaction I think is going to come in play. Where if you are actually actively listening to something, maybe it's not needed. Um, but if it's a system idle, maybe you'd want to show it, right? So this is kind of where that that distinction of like, well, if you're listening to music, the volume is going to change. You're going to be able to tell the volume change. You can, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that's a discussion more for skills interaction. I feel like if the system's totally idle, then yeah, 100%, I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, it would be less of an interaction thing and more of a uh, skill state thing from my point of view, because if the system were idle, then you'd want to basically go into a, you know, you might want to go into like an interactive volume setting uh, mode rather than just a, you know, set the volume kind of command. Right. That's that seemed to be what you were talking about there, Derek. But yeah, I mean, if it's, it's yeah. idle, you're like set the volume to set and it's not doing anything or like, well, it gives you multiple ways of a multimodal interaction, right? So yeah. Like, oh, I don't actually like seven. That's not quite light enough. Well, then you have the opportunity. You could either slide it up to eight and it's right. going to give you the beat or, you know, which may be faster at that point if it's sitting at your desk than saying change to eight or whatever. So, right. yeah, I, th I think, it, yeah, I, I really, at a system idle, I really like it. Um, yeah. I think the argument for whether we want to do it while listening to music, you know, I could I could see an argument against it there for sure. Um, if you're on the latest build, you should also notice that when you um, get to wake or recognize the gutter, our first use of the gutter is now uh, visible. I did notice that. I've actually been appreciating uh, the the more frequent updates, and uh, I did notice that the other day. That was uh, it's really cool. Yeah, that's another yeah, so shout out again to Aditya for that. Um, and that that showed up on Ovos first, but you know we've been talking about it too. But but they uh, they had it over there first, so they brought it over over for us. Yeah, and the idea, as Derek was telling me, behind that is that it will mimic what the LEDs do. So you have know, the same experience whether you have LEDs or a screen or both; it'll all work the same. Yeah, I think yeah. Eventually, that's the kind of the first is just the wake where you know eventually we'll, the whole essentially whatever the LEDs are doing, we want to do with the the edge thing too. That way, you know, in the future, if you've got, because a lot, actually, a lot of smart displays uh, don't have LEDs, right? They just they use the screen entirely for their feedback, and so you got both bases covered there, right? Awesome. Okay. Well, yay to everyone! <laughs> I love that oh, wow. shout out fest. It's good. Um, yeah. Michael, did you have anything else that you wanted to raise? No, I'm I'm uh, apparently still recovering from my surgery a couple of days ago, so I'm uh, uh, trying to take it easy. Cool, cool. Um, I did do a blog post for the skills interaction stuff, so if you haven't seen that, um, or if you can't find that, it. ping me and oh, great, uh, cool. All right. Well then, everyone, we'll see you. Actually, I'm not going to come tomorrow, just so you know. Um, I'm going to go away for the weekend, and tomorrow is Saturday. So, yeah. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Can that work yeah. five days a week, please? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> all right i'll see you all next week all right, all right. yeah bye have a good weekend bye <laughs>